Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. Linux Newslog is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. For those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing and staying subscribed. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and get into the uh, cool uh, news and stories for this episode. Starting off over at PC World, Microfocus is buying Novell and uh, Susie Linux owner for $1.2 billion. That's a lot of cheddar. In a move that will collect a lot of infrastructure software under one roof, mainframe software provider Microfocus, I've never actually even heard of them, uh, has started proceedings to merge with Attachmate Group, owners of Novell and Susie Linux, for approximately $1.2 billion. The combined company should have a yearly revenue of $1.4 billion, with more than 4,500 employees and more than 30,000 customers. A merger of the two companies makes sense, given that both are established enterprise software vendors with global marketing reach and little overlap in either products or customers. Uh, so, pretty interesting. Um, should be, uh, be keeping an eye on that just to see uh, what happens. From Market Watch, Red Hat announces general availability of Red Hat Enterprise Linux 5.1. Um, Red Hat, the world's leading provider of open source solutions, today announced the availability of Red Hat Enterprise Linux 5.1, the final minor release of the mature Red Hat Enterprise Linux 5 platform. Red Hat Enterprise Linux 5.11 reiterates Red Hat's commitment to a 10-year product life cycle for all major Red Hat Enterprise Linux releases and offers a secure, stable, and reliable platform for critical enterprise applications. This is good news. This is one of the things, particularly when you get into enterprises, uh, enterprises that are Unix-based that you know rely on the system remaining relatively unchanged uh, over time. So, uh, great news to hear. Uh, from ZDNet, Red Hat Software Collections 1.2 Beta, new software for Linux developers. This is kind of cool. I thought I'd talk about this since I do software development for a living. Uh, this is from Stephen J. Von Nichols in his Linux and open source blog over at uh, ZDNet. Want to keep your operating system on the straight and stable while at the same time using cutting edge development languages and programs? Then Red Hat has the tools for you with its beta release of Red Hat Software Collections 1.2. Uh, Red Hat uh, Software Collections is released on a faster cadence than Red Hat's operating systems. That way, programmers working on production systems running Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 or 6.5 can still use the most up-to-date programming tools. So, things that you'll find. Uh, Red Hat Developer Toolset 3.0, Dev Assistant, Maven 3, Git 194, etc., etc. Pretty nice. Um you know, these are all tools that a lot of us use uh, on, on at least a weekly basis, if not a daily basis. From uh, betanews.com, Opera has released Opera Beta 25, which sees the Opera Next Channel renamed as part of what could be a landmark release for the alternative web browser when it hits final release next month. The headline new feature is the overdue implementation of bookmarks into the browser, so why are we talking about this? Well, it's also joined by the first Linux beta build since Opera relaunched last year, plus offers a redesign, redefined, redesigned, boy, I can't get that right, redesigned start page, integrated PDF viewer, and support for web notifications direct from the Windows or Mac desktop. So pretty awesome, uh, especially if you're a Linux user. From infoworld.com, Version 1.0 of JetBrains C Lion IDE will include C and C++ support. I have been watching this um, for a while now. JetBrains is, uh, they make a fair amount of developer tools. They're widely regarded as awesome. Um, 
so, you know, they, uh, you know, have been working on this for a while. I'm interested to see, um, particularly in C and C++, you get a lot of, you know, Emacs and Vim users and, and, you know, that sort of thing. And Eclipse for Java, which I've done a lot of Java development in the past, is, you know, pretty much the gold standard. And in, at least in Windows land, Visual Studio is pretty much the gold standard there for doing uh, C or C++ development. So JetBrains, uh, C-Line IDE should be pretty nice. The article here points out uh, with its C-Line IDE development tools vendor, JetBrains is adding C and C++ to its roster of supported languages, but the company might have a hard time persuading developers to switch over from Eclipse or Visual Studio IDEs, as, uh, as analysts are saying. So C-Line is geared for building applications on Linux, OS X, or Windows. It's offering a smart editor for coding, a problem solver for improving code quality, debugging, and integration with the CMake build system. Forrester analyst Michael Facemeyer said in an email that the new IDE is nice looking and offers good Sublime-like find features, referring to the Sublime text editor, uh, Sublime Text Code Editor. Still, he expressed doubts about the potential for C Line. Is it that much better than using Visual Studio or Eclipse? That's a developer by developer preference, you know. And obviously, that is, you know, a lot of developers will have a preference. Um, you know, you can do that in smaller organizations, but as soon as you start to get into larger organizations, it's really generally a good idea to kind of standardize on a tool set. Uh, it just makes onboarding people easier. It makes bringing, you know, if, if everybody uses the same tool, it's, you get a lot more synergy. So anyway, uh, from Linux gizmos.com fanless mini PC runs Linux on via quad core E series. This is pretty neat. Via is rugged Linux ready Artigo a 1300 mini PC uses a new via quad core E series CPU and VX11PH GPU and offers dual HDMI, gigabit ethernet, and optional 3G and Wi-Fi. It's $550. Uh, it's a, a long, the same, very long line of Linux ready via Artigo mini PCs. Um, it's fanless 7.28 by 6.38 by 1.75 inches. It's uh, designed for dual display signage, kiosk, menu board, HMI, and of course the ubiquitous Internet of Things applications. Um, it will operate in 0 to 45 degrees Celsius as well as shock and vibration resistance. So this is kind of one of those really cool embedded things. Um, you know, definitely something that uh, you would see like, uh, you know, in the signs hanging up at a fast food restaurant or any other digital signage type applications. Um, pretty awesome. Definitely check it out. From uh, linuxgizmos.com again, Android One phones have been launched in India. Google launched the first Android One phones in India starting at $103 U.S., from uh, Micromax, Carbon, and Spice, and backed by direct Android updates from Google. Google announced this Android One initiative for selling budget Android phones in developing countries in June's Google I.O. conference. Um, and like its Nexus program, Android One defines a mobile reference platform with a stock, up-to-date Android stack free of bloatware and UI skins. With Android One, however, multiple phones and manufacturers are supported at once, and the program also encompasses Google, directed data plans, and update services that are typically offered by carriers or manufacturers. So if you're in India and you want to get one of these, check it out. That will do it for this edition of the Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe if you haven't already done so. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.